This is a message by Apostle Joshua Selman. I want you to listen to this one. What happens when we pray? We receive the prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives. Oh, this is serious. When we pray, we receive in the place of prayer, not the prophetic blueprint for our destiny, the prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives. God can show you your end and you may never get there because you do not know and you do not have the blueprint of seasons. Now, let me tell you this. What you call destiny is a summation of many seasons in your life. And if you do not know how to receive the prophetic blueprint per season, you will miss out on prophetic moments. Let's look at a few scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please. 9 and 10, very quickly. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Listen, the things which God had, talk to me koinonia, God had prepared. He's prepared them already. There are things, realms, dimensions. He's prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, the Bible says, but God has to reveal what he has prepared. Just because it is prepared does not mean it will manifest in your life. It is prepared but hidden. Prepared but shrouded. Are we together? Prepared but closed and sealed. It is in the, the place of prayer that you afford the Holy Ghost the opportunity to reveal it unto you because it is only revealed by His Spirit. The Spirit in the place of prayer begins to search all things, even the deep things of God. And those things the Bible says have been ordained for our glory. When we pray, we receive the blueprint, the prophetic blueprint for every season. Please look up. You've heard my story. I told you from the time God called me, I already saw the vision of nations. I already saw the visions of several people. But how many of you know that I still would have failed in ministry even with that vision? Because when my time in Zaria was over, it was not part of the initial vision I saw where else I would go. Are you seeing it now? You can have the big picture, but every season demands you receiving a blueprint that guides you for that next level. Honestly, when I knew, I began to sense in my spirit by this impulse of discernment that in truth, my season in Zaria had come to an end. But now, whether it was Abuja or it was Jaws or it was America or UK, because all of these impulses had been registered in my spirit that Koinonia would find expression in all these places. But which is which? That one I did not know. If God leads you, one of the ways you will know he's leading you is he will never show you everything. No. It is page after page. Don't think he will give you the book and say go. Mm -mm. You will have to refer to him again. I've exhausted page five. And he says prepare for page six. And you will have to submit yourself again. Some of you started well, but you are about aborting the next season because you made a blind assumption that just because page one to five has been executed well, it means that the remaining will work well. I began to pray every day, sincerely investing in the place of prayer. Lord, for the sake of your name, let me not miss out on the next level. Where do you want? I'm telling you, if I had my way, I'm not sure it's Abuja would come. No. Are we together now? Lovely place. I love the place, but maybe I would have gone somewhere else. But in the place of prayer. And you would think because God was sending me. Remember what I told you. I used to wonder why it takes God a while to answer. And let me tell you, if you're a person of faith, you need to balance your understanding of faith with this thing I just taught you. If not, you'll be frustrated. It is not every time God gives immediate answers and it does not stop him from being God. There is profit in process. And when God finds that in the life of a believer, he will withhold answers intentionally to produce capacity and produce power. I remember praying and weeks turned to months 
and I was praying and one day as always I was praying my usual prayer and a vision was open before me and I didn't hear anything all I saw was the map of Abuja and I knew that was it I remember rejoicing I said finally some of you would have said God so it's finally is now why did you now waste my time when I'm already in the Abuja always see what you have become before the answers came always see what you have become God is more interested in what you become than the answer you receive did you hear what I said God is more interested in what you become than the answer if God answered me after day one maybe I would not have this kind of result to the glory of God do you know why because sometimes when answers come and your flesh is still alive you will think it was a dexterity your level of spirituality there is a level of brokenness there are times God does not answer till you make certain personal covenant resolutions with him he will wait until the day you get angry and say okay God I'm telling you if you finally give me this money I'm the one telling you as I obtain grace then the answer comes and so this is what you were waiting for you would have told me Telling you will not make you do it. The human being, eh, aside from the dealings of God, is, all, is also a master of deception, even to yourself. Until God prunes you, he cannot trust the things you say because you've said many things that you did not live up to it. You ask him to kill you. He knew you were playing. You would have died a long time ago. You were so emotional, you wanted the result. Oh God, I'm telling you, just give me a job. God said, pray, please, pray. I've already seen your heart. I've seen your heart. Give me a job. Even if it's there, and God said, no, I want to make you a multi-millionaire. But I have checked your family tree and I've seen the tendencies of pride and the tendencies of flesh. And because of the way enemies have insulted you, if I give you 10 million, 100 million in this state, you will first leave me and flog it on the face of those who did not. So let me kill that self. Yes, sir. Occasionally, you will shelve the prayer and try to act in the flesh then fail woefully and return back in repentance and say god i'm here he says i'm still waiting let's pray but if it is me that will prosper you something in you must die and by the time you get to a point where one day you will read a scripture and say god i don't care again whether i prosper or i don't prosper whatever happens i'm telling you that as for me and i will follow you for the rest of my life somebody suddenly calls you and says god spoke to me in january and you say in january and you are only obeying now my brother i suffered from january till october because of your disobedience as funny as what i'm saying is this is how it works <laughs> there is an invisible hand that has withheld many answers because the version of you now it will be a risk to your destiny for those answers to drop therefore you pray to receive the blueprint it was in the place of prayer God brought the vision of sound of revival it was right now I'm still praying and say Lord how do you want it to be because I'm not going to assume that just because we did it the way we did it uh -uh, we parted the Red Sea by the message of God but how do you want it this time around do you want us to walk on water or do you want us to get a boat if you stand before seven rivers, hear God for the seven rivers. It's the reason why the world struggles. They have one result today, they cannot produce another one tomorrow because of assumptions. Listen, your prophetic blueprint is sealed. It takes engaging in the place of prayer. And let me tell you this, prayer reveals and prayer purifies what you saw. Prayer does not just reveal, but it purifies. There are many times you will see things, both the ones God showed you and the ones that came out of emotions. Are we together now? Getting up to execute what you saw will leave you in pain. Just because it came from the place of prayer does not mean it came from God. You have your will. You are still being transformed. Who is learning? There are many, many things that you would think is God that told you. Submit yourself to prayer 
and you will be shocked. You will have to tell God sorry because at the end of it, you will find out that all that confidence of saying it was God is not God. That's why you must be careful. In the kingdom, arrogance is dangerous. There are many statements that you make and say, I know what God told me. And then later God says, okay, come my son. Honestly, it's not me. Mm -mm. You were in pain. This seed that you raised, you felt in your spirit it was me. But it was a mix of pain and rent and other issues that led to that thing. It was not me at all. And then if you are broken, you can say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Or you can say, God, no, I know I had you. And he said, me that, I, this is God. I'm telling you, I'm not the one who spoke. You are still saying I'm the one who spoke. Okay, remain here. And many people remain stunted there. Prayer does not just reveal the blueprint for your destiny. It purifies it. Because while God is speaking, it comes through the lens of your mentality, the lens of your mind. And many other information can be added that did not come from the throne. It is prayer that purifies it. Eventually, you will see that, ah, God said, do two programs. The vision came so powerfully, flesh added five more programs. And God says, reduce it, reduce it. The remaining five is not me. Mm -mm, it's not me. It's, ah, God, but based on what I'm seeing, I'm already seeing myself. Mm -mm, it is not me. And then eventually, you will see his wisdom. I hope you are learning tonight. The blueprint. Only God knows how many things I've had to cancel in my jota that I would have been convinced that it was God when they came. Now, I have grown. It doesn't matter what I see or hear. I write it and it becomes my place, my prayer point. I have to take it to the threshing floor. Are we together now? If God says, organize a program next week, I will write that vision. You ask the leaders. There are times you can see me come with a lot of energy and tell you, ah, guys, there's something good. And then you see me keep quiet. The leaders are already used to it. Once they see me keep quiet like that, they don't even bother saying, sir, you, you mentioned that we we're going to Russia the other time. What happened? I'm not ashamed to cancel anything that I see that is not God. It's cheaper to say sorry than to be disgraced a thousand times in destiny because of pride. Are we together? See, when you walk like this, your activities will not be many, but your winning percentage will be so high. Almost everything you do produces extraordinary results extraordinary results there are people who will do 50 things before they win three they keep failing in everything then after 10 activities wasting money wasting time if you lead the people that way they will leave you alone because they've already mastered that something is wrong with your hearing let me tell you this if you wanted to be a leader that commands followership you are not god but you must learn how to hear god if you move people left and you say, sorry, I thought it was right. They now go right. They now go left. They will love you, but they stand back and say, please, let's leave this guy. So he goes right and left. He, he loves God, but it's clear that he doesn't know where he's going. And people turn and look for direction. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. I don't know what is next in the script of your destiny, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God will reveal it to you expressly. The next script of your life, let it be revealed for you. And hear me, where you have already assumed a blueprint that is not in your blueprint, whether it came by flesh, it came by emotions, I pray from my heart for you. May God give you the courage to cancel and shelve it now. Cancel and shelve it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are working with God, you must have the flexibility that when you realize that this is not God, I know somebody who made up his mind, he sent me a text one day, you know, just maybe three or four years ago, that God asked him, you know, to build a house for his family. And I may not know everything about God, but I know how God works. I said, this guy does not have the capacity to do that kind of thing. And I, I, I know how God works. I said, no, this is not. But the gentleman, you know, took a step of faith and went, did this, borrowed money, got into all kinds of trouble. 
after a long time I didn't hear from him he now reached me and said I should pray for him God as you know he doesn't understand this thing about God again he's really frustrated I said my friend it is not God it is your confusion about him and right now you are bleeding you are in trouble they will soon jail you the way out is to go to God and repent are we together repent and say Lord you've met me in the middle of the fire okay I'm sorry don't leave me there don't leave me there some of you now one of the there is the gift of pain but let me tell you this most people's pain is an indication that you are out of, of you are out of the will of God don't fight the pain use it as a check to go back and say God why is my life difficult why are simple things unusually hard for me it may not necessarily be demonic it may just be that the hardship is a testament that you are outside of the will of God again I pray for you the blueprint for the next level of your life may God release it upon you is someone learning tonight what's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to I bet it's fear fear that whispers you're not enough you can't do it you'll fail but what if I told you God never intended for you to live in fear in fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me, give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. 
In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.